All right. So I want to talk to you today about uh, reasoning with function signatures. So um, why? Well, first of all, assuming we have pure functions, which means that we can assume the absence of side effects, that there's no invisible dependencies, then that is going to make our functions predictable, reproducible, testable, and it favors local reasoning, which means that it's going to be much easier to be confident in uh, the, the correctness of our, our function. And so if we have pure functions, then uh, we're going to be able to uh, reason based on function signatures uh, without necessarily looking at the implementation details of the function. So in order to build that reason, I'm just going to step through an example step by step to show how I believe we can reason like this. So let's take a problem that I think everyone here is going to be familiar with because it's a tool we use. And the question is, what is a compiler? So uh, the first answer I would give to that is basically it's a function like this that uh, you provide a string view to, you invoke it, and then you're getting a vector of bytes back. And that vector of bytes represents executable code. And so we're already going to refine our signature here by using this uh, more semantic uh, return type. So basically, we're invoking compile, we're providing a string view that is code, and we're getting back executable code. So OK, th this is kind of a simplistic view of what a compiler is. Uh, but it is useful, because yes, most of the time when we invoke the compiler, uh, what we'd like to have is a meaningful program come out of it. Uh, but then. Uh, Let's see what we can do. First, uh, we can uh, consider the, that the result of our program is actually not the program itself, but it's more like a, the, the result of the compilation. So part of that is the executable code. So once again, we're going to refine uh, the function signature here and just uh, replace the result type with compilation result here. And it's going to make it possible for us to um, go more into details about what is the result uh, of uh, the execution of our compiler. Uh, so what is the other thing that our compiler can produce? Well, it is a vector of strings, which uh, we can call diagnostics. So assuming I did some mistakes and my source code is ill-formed, then uh, I should get a uh, non-empty vector back uh, as far as diagnostics are concerned. And at this point, you may have noticed that, uh, well, if I do get diagnostics back, then I should not be getting an output program. Or maybe I do, because uh, maybe I'm just getting warnings and not errors. Uh, so it is true that we could rewrite here like this. Uh, our output program is actually an optional part of the result here. Uh, it doesn't mean we're actually going to get an output program if the program is ill-formed. The compiler doesn't have to provide us with uh, bytes, executable bytes in this case. Um, then there are also other things that we could do with a compiler. Let's say we are providing some options. So here we're going to introduce a new structure. We'll call that compilation options. And the option we're going to be interested in here is to, uh, we're going to ask the compiler to output the dependencies of the translation unit. So by default, uh, we uh, set this goal, to, this goal to false. But uh, here, we're going to rewrite the function signature to pass an additional argument uh, in order to per uh, parameterize our compile function. And uh, because of this additional function, then we can rewrite and improve on our compilation result again by providing a new part of the result, which is a vector of file system paths that point to the different dependencies. And uh, once again, because a vector can be empty, even if we're if we're not asking for dependencies, we can still have this vector be part of the results. It's just going to be empty. And so um, there's a lot of ways like this that we could strive and really create a very com well a more complex interface to what are the inputs to our compile function and what is the structure of the compilation result we get, uh, but. The, the essence of a compiler is that you can run this single function and uh, you can basically abstract away a lot of the complexity of the compiler by just going with a simplified uh, function signature, such as the first one I showed early on, where you provide a string with source code, a string view with source code, and then get a vector of bytes back as a result. So uh, the reason 
I think this is interesting for reasoning is that it, when you strive for function purity, then you can introduce complex IDs with a simplified function signature. And then slowly you can go to more complex IDs by going uh, forward and moving towards the complete function signature. Uh, it can make uh, exchanges between teams much easier uh, to talk about. And also when you're asking coworkers for help on a problem, introducing them to your complex setup with a very simplified function signature that captures the essence of your problem is a very efficient way to communicate. So thank you for your attention. And I hope you have a great conference, everyone.